What is going on my fellow budget gamers? It has been well over a year since we've done a right proper $20 gaming CPU review, so let's fix that. Today I am genuinely excited because one of my absolute favorite budget CPUs and a true legend is on the block, the Xeon E5 2667 V2. Launched way back in 2013, this was the original hint of hope for the future, a chip with a high core count and high clock speeds. Hailing from Ivy Bridge, this one-time monster sports 8 cores with hyper-threading, a 3.3 GHz base clock, and an incredible 4 GHz max turbo clock with a staggering 25 MB of cache, all of which was absolutely bonkers for 2013. But it's not 2013 anymore. Times and spec levels have changed, and this aging powerhouse can now be had on the secondhand market in the $10 to $20 range. That might make for an amazing value proposition given that these chips drop into breathtakingly cheap Dell Precisions or HP Z420s, both of which can be spec'd out with even cheaper ECCR DIMMs for ultra budget gaming. None of that matters though until we answer the one true question about this chip. Does it game? Test platform for this is going to be a Dell Precision T70-610 running 16 gigs of quad-channel DDR3-1600 ECCR memory with a 10 gig RX-6700 that we may have to pretend did not just appear on this channel and is definitely not related to any other content at all. Anyway, the benchmarks. I have revised the benchmarking lineup for cheap CPUs just a little bit. However, at the outset we're still going to use Cinebench just to see how things stack up. And with scores which are impressive for its age in both single thread and multi-core, the 2667V2 is now king of the hill, the undisputed fastest chip in this long overdue series continuation. 3D Mark Firestrike likewise yields a predictably impressive physics score owing to both the chip's high clock speeds for the time and its relatively high core count with plenty of cash to keep those cores happily fed. And now I'm gonna put a sock in it and just roll the real game benchmarks. Now despite the fantastic price to performance ratio on tap here, this Xeon is not without its downsides. However there's no point in getting into those since my analytics say this is where most of you are just clicking onto another video anyway. And on that cliffhanger, thank you all for watching, be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this and I'll see you all in the next one.